What seriously made you think, oh well, that's a psychopath? Was my mother's ex boyfriend. Used to be a great guy, even raised me like one of his daughters by doing stuff like paying for my school fees and buying stuff for me. Don't know what happened, but his relationship with my mother turned sour and shit went crazy. He locked us in the house and locked the fridge, so my mother and I just lived in my bedroom and had to buy a fridge for there and live there. Would turn off the hot water in the morning and lock the gate so I would have to bath in freezing cold water in winter and have to climb over the walls to get to school, and when she got a court order to get him out of the house, he would stalk her and constantly ram his car into the gate until the early hours of the morning, I think once he snuck into the yard ad smeared chicken blood all over our door. All of this in a span of two months. I met a psychopath while volunteering with rescue animals. TLDR at the bottom. Many years ago, I volunteered with stray animals. We'd rescue, fix them and find families to adopt. After a big rescue, there was a specific animal that was in pretty bad shape, and the vet said it should be euthanized. This vet was very reliable and would never suggest such a drastic procedure if the poor animal had a fighting chance. Because of this rescue, I was interviewed by a TV station, and my picture with the animals appeared in a local newspaper. Right after, one of the members of the group said she'd do anything to save that extremely sick animal and wouldn't let it be euthanized. The group didn't agree because we had over a hundred animals also in bad shape that could be saved. She went rogue, banned everyone that didn't agree with her, leaving the animals with us, except the very sick one, by changing the password to all our pages, organized a big fundraise to save the animal's life, and so on. She kept posting pictures with the animal on Facebook to gather more money while making up all kinds of lies about the former group members. She also lied, saying she was a veterinary student when in reality, she was only the cashier of a pet store. I was too busy with the other hundred animals, so just made a new group and didn't pay more attention to her. Anyway, months later, one of the former group members messaged me to apologize for not believing in me when we went against that girl. The reason she finally believed in me was because she took her own animals to the vet for their annual checkup, and when she commented about how well the sick animal was looking, the vet said, but he died months ago. Then she went to the girl's house to confront her, and the girl finally told her what happened, the girl kept the animal's body in her freezer and would take the corpse for pics to get attention and money. She was from a upper middle class family and only snapped after I got interviews and not her, so I'm pretty sure she did it all for attention. I knew something was wrong with her, attention whore, pathological liar, but the freezed corpse really got me thinking she was a psychopath. The ex-husband of my mother tried to snap our cat's neck because she misbehaved and didn't listen to him. When I was a teenager, I worked in retail with a woman who I'll call Jackie, who had a son in high school slash going off to college. He would come into the store at times, and while I didn't know him very well, I knew of him from those few times he visited, he was always very sweet. Jackie was a bit of your typical Karen, loud, pushy, and had the attitude that she is always right and everyone else just has to deal with her. I quit later that year and was walking by the store a few months after and saw Jackie was working, so I stopped by to say hello with my mother. Jackie informed us that her son, in his first year of university, had been struck on his bike by a drunk driver. She tearfully, in a detailed hour-long story, told us about how he had been on life support as her and her family rushed the six hours to his college town to see him, with him dying just as they arrived, and all the details of his funeral. My mother and I were in tears and consoling her as she went through this harrowing tale. About two months later, I started university and wound up in a class with Jackie's niece, who I had at one time worked with in the store. We were catching up, and I offered my condolences on the death of her cousin. She gave me the weirdest WTF look and asked what I meant. I explained, and she just shook her head, saying, oh, not at all, once he got out of the house, he refused to speak with his parents. He is perfectly healthy, talked to him last week. And laughed. That was a huge moment of realization for what a narcissistic person will do for control of the narrative and for pity, and the fact that it was just another thing Jackie does was terrifying. Scary shit, she even described the floral arrangements at her son's funeral. I used to be a social worker. Had a client that I knew something was off about. He gave everyone the creeps, especially the women in our office. Part of my job required obtaining background checks. 
We got one on him, and it turns out he was arrested for being a cat serial killer. Guy was stealing cats from his neighborhood and killing them in different ways. He stabbed some of them, threw some against walls, broke their necks, etc. And the police found them in his freezer. Ed had just looked him up. He was arrested recently for threatening a woman with a knife. A man who lived in my freshman dorm complex at BYU was a natural leader, very charismatic and charming. He went on a Mormon mission to Honduras, and when he came back after two years, we bumped into each other, and he invited me to dinner. At dinner, he told me a funny mission story about an elderly widow in Honduras. This woman's little pet dog was sick, and he told her that he'd bring the dog to a vet to be healed. Instead, he euthanized the dog. Shocked, I assumed that the vet had determined that the dog was ill beyond help and compassionately put them down, still not okay without the owner's permission. Nope, this missionary snapped the dog's neck with his bare hands in the yard outside the widow's house. He was chuckling as he told me as if this was a charming, relatable story. He told the woman that he brought the dog to Jesus. This man seemed absolutely normal, no indication whatsoever that he would do something like this. He should have been sent home from his mission dishonorably. When my ex told me that he knew he was abusing me, and that he manipulated people in situations so that no one would believe me. Saying that everyone would blame me for staying and trying to fix things. That piece of shit had the gall to laugh while he was saying it. I couldn't leave because we lived in a tiny rural town, he made me put my car in his name to save money on the title. But actually, he'd threatened to call and report the car stolen if I ever left. And my family wouldn't come get me. From what I hear, his life is pretty shitty nowadays, so that's nice. A young child. A very young child. We had to observe them to learn what was triggering their behavior. We spent weeks observing this child. Here is some of their usual behavior we had to deal with on a daily basis. Bashing heads, adult and children, into anything slash everything near them. Biting faces. General hitting slash kicking. Sitting on heads slash faces. Strangling. And there were others incidents like. Stabbing someone in the leg with a fork. Hitting a newborn baby. We did everything we could to prevent and control this behavior. Our weeks of observation taught us that their trigger was sheer enjoyment. This child enjoyed causing pain and inflicting fear. They would laugh as others cried, bled, and when they flinched and ran away. There was never any sign of empathy in them. No remorse, no regrets. Just a look that screamed, I'm gonna do that again cause it was fun.